Hey, what is up, mortals? Welcome to part 1 season 1 of What If Deku Was in Viltrum I. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying. Sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So, we begin. The winds blew gently, and the insects sang. The streets were almost empty, for not a single person could be seen. The world was covered by a gentle darkness, only lit up by the stars on this peaceful night. In the midst of this gentle darkness was one man. He was well-built, had black hair, and a fine mustache. He looked like any ordinary man, but that couldn't be further from the truth. His name was Nalan Midoriya. But the world knew him as the hero called Omni-Man. Next to him was a four-year-old boy with green hair and freckles. This was none other than his son, Izuku Midoriya. Nalan had taken his son out in an attempt to cheer him up. Earlier that day they were at the doctor's to see if he had developed a quirk, only to find out that he was quirkless. Izuku had been devastated by this, for he always wanted to be a hero. Nalan wanted to cheer his son up, and he knew exactly how to do so. Son, there's something that I need to tell you. I wanted to wait until you were a little older, but I believe that you are ready now, Nalan said. As he looked at his son with proud and joyous eyes, Izuku was oblivious, as he didn't know what his father was talking about. I am the hero known as Omni-Man, and I think that it's time for you to know where I actually come from, Nalan said, his voice sounding just as proud as before. Izuku was shocked. He didn't know how to react. His father was one of the greatest heroes on the planet. How is one supposed to react to that? Nalan just smiled at his son. As he started to explain, millions of miles from here, out in deep space, is a planet called Viltrum. It's a blue planet floating around in a solar system. Much like this one, and that's where I was born. Viltrumites are much like humans. Except we can fly, move at super speeds, and possess great strength. When we come of age we leave Viltrum and venture out into the galaxy, using our abilities to help lesser developed worlds. I volunteered to come to Earth and be its protector. That is when I met your mother and we eventually had you, the man said, carefully explaining everything to his son. Izuku was once again shocked. How could his father be an alien? And what does that make him? Izuku you may be quirkless, as the doctors here call it, but you are part Viltrumite. Soon, as you grow older, You'll start to develop superhuman abilities. You'll have super strength, super speed, and flight. Do you understand? Nalan then continued, hoping that his son understood what all of this meant. Izuku was silent for a while, until finally decided to speak. Can I still be a hero like All Might? And you dad? The green-haired boy asked, his voice faint and a little nervous. Nalan was thrown off by this question. He knew about his son's admiration for the number one hero. But he didn't think that he would admire him as well. It filled the man with a strange feeling that he quickly realized was joy. Yes, my son, you will be as great as me, and you'll be even greater than All Might. Nolan then said, his voice showing just how happy and proud he was. Izuku quickly lit up with joy and excitement. He may be quirkless, but that didn't matter for he would still have powers. He could still be a hero, just like the people he admired. Ten years passed. But Izuku didn't develop any Viltrumite powers. The green-haired boy was still waiting for them to manifest. But he was getting impatient, so much so that he began losing hope about it altogether. It also didn't help that his childhood friend, Katsuki Bakugu, had been bullying him almost every day for being quirkless. Izuku never told anyone about Viltrumites, or that his father is the unlicensed hero called Omni-Man, for he had been strictly told to keep it a secret. In this society it is pretty easy to mask Viltrumite abilities as a quirk. Assuming that they actually manifest, the class was quiet, all patiently waiting for the teacher to begin. Izuku was just sitting by his bench, idly waiting as the teacher finally walked into the classroom. All right class, it's time that you all think about your futures. I could pass you all these career aptitude tests, but why bother? I know you all want to be heroes, the teacher said, smiling as he threw his papers to the ceiling. The class responded by cheering and using their quirks while Izuku just waved his hand without any form of enthusiasm. Shortly after that the teacher told his students to calm down, and that quirk usage was not allowed on school grounds. That is when a confident, and somewhat arrogant, voice spoke up. Hey, teach, don't lump me in with these extras. They'll be lucky to end up as the sidekicks of D-listers. It said, everyone turned to see that it was an ashen blonde teen, Katsuki Bakugu. Bakugu, you show great results on your tests. You might actually get accepted into UA. The teacher then said everyone's jaw hit the floor upon hearing this. As Bakugu proceeded to brag about how he would be accepted. That's right, Midoriya. Don't you want to go to UA too? The teacher then said. The classroom quickly went into complete silence. Before bursting out laughing. 
Izuku felt humiliated and tried to hide himself. But that is when an explosion knocked him out of his chair. Deku, you're even worse than these extras. They will never let a quirkless loser like you into UA. You'll die before the exam even starts. Bakugou shouted in anger. Getting another string of laughter from the other students, Izuku was scared. But he also got a little angry as he responded by saying, I still have a chance. Kakin, with a voice that showed a strange mixture between nervousness and anger, Bakugou just got angrier upon hearing this. As he growled, how would a quirkless loser like you ever have a chance? Izuku was silent after this, for he didn't know what to say. The chance he had been talking about was that he could unlock his Viltrumite powers. But he couldn't tell that to Bakugou, even if he could. There was no way that he would ever believe him. Bakugou lowered his hands upon witnessing Izuku. The green-haired boy wasn't just silent. He wore a conflicted expression as his gaze was turned away from Bakugou. The blonde grinned maliciously. As he turned around and said, Know your place, Deku, before walking back to his seat. The class then went on as it should have. And Izuku still felt the humiliation. After the school day had ended the green-haired boy was once again confronted by Bakugou who immediately began patronizing Izuku. The blonde blew up Izuku's notebook, trying to threaten him into not applying for UA, and even told him that if he wanted a quirk he should pray that he would get one in his next life. Izuku couldn't fight back to any of this, for he was too weak. What Bakugou did affected him deeply, but there wasn't anything that he could do. It was during these moments that he reminded himself that he's a Viltrumite, and that he would awaken his powers soon, but even that was starting to lose its effect by now. The green-haired collected what was left of his notebook and other belongings before leaving. Thinking about everything, his dad had spoken as if it was guaranteed that he would develop powers. Yet nothing has happened. He is still weak and quirkless. At this point it was fair to assume that all the talk about Viltrumites was nothing but a creative lie. Made in an attempt to lift his spirits. But Izuku still had hoped that it wasn't all fabricated, being so lost in his own thoughts. Izuku didn't realize that he was taking a different route than usual, therefore he didn't notice when a green and sludge-like substance started to wrap itself around him. Sorry kid, but I'll be taking your body now, the substance said ominously. Izuku was being choked by the villain, and couldn't breathe. He tried to break free, but he couldn't. His vision started getting blurry, and he began losing the strength in his arms. Izuku was about to lose consciousness, and possibly his life when suddenly the manhole next to them blew open. Out of it came a hulking figure with blonde hair and a proud smile. As it shouted, Have no fear, for I am here. With a proud and booming voice, the villain quickly panicked upon witnessing the figure. But it didn't get to go far before it was blown away by a powerful punch. The blonde man caught the half-unconscious Izuku, shaking him as he asked, Young man, are you all right? With a worried tone, Izuku slowly regained his senses. Not recognizing the voice at first, but he quickly lit up in typical fanboy fashion when he could both see and hear again. All might, the green-haired boy shouted, voice filled to the brim with excitement. The blonde hero smiled at the teen, before saying, Yes, it is I you're lucky that I got here when I did, young man. He looked just about ready to kick the bucket. With his usual booming voice, Izuku couldn't stop fanboying. As he quickly asked All Might for his autograph, the blonde hero happily complied before proceeding to put the sludge villain in two empty soda bottles. Well, I guess it's time that I take my leave. All Might then said, Wait. I want to ask you Izuku exclaimed but was cut off when All Might leaped into the sky, only to find that the green-haired boy had clung to his leg. They both panicked at this scene, until they crashed down on a rooftop. All Might then proceeded to scold Izuku for what he did, before telling him to bang on the door until someone let him in. Wait. I wanted to ask you something, the green-haired boy exclaimed, desperately trying to make the blonde hero stay and listen. Luckily, All Might did just that. I've wanted to know this for a long time now. I've always wanted to be a hero like you. But I'm quirkless. Can someone still be a hero without a quirk? Izuku asked, only to almost have a heart attack once his gaze returned to All Might. Instead of a blonde and muscular man, he was in front of a man who looked like he had been raised from the dead. Izuku panicked and immediately believed that this was an imposter. But the skeletal man reassured him and said that he was the real All Might. The blonde hero then explained both his injury and time limit, sending shock into Izuku. The green-haired boy could barely believe what All Might was telling him. He held the number one hero in a similar regard as his own father, Omni-Man. He believed them both to be invincible. But it turns out that this wasn't even close to reality. All Might then coughed, knocking Izuku out of his thoughts before he spoke. About your question. 
If you can be a hero without a quirk, no, I honestly don't think that you can become a hero. There are threats that almost can't be dealt with, even with quirks, so it would be impossible to do it without a quirk, the blonde man said, before slowly making his way over to the door. Izuku was frozen in place upon hearing this. As All Might then said, if you really want to be a hero, you can become a police officer. It's okay to have dreams. Just make sure that they're realistic. Before leaving through the door, Izuku didn't know how to react. He was broken, defeated. His biggest idol just told him that he couldn't be a hero. He even said that it would be impossible. He would need to unlock his Viltrumite powers in order to be a hero, but it's all a lie. The green-haired boy said the last thought out loud. His voice heavily weighed down with defeat. All Might's words were the tipping point. He had finally realized it. He had finally realized that he was weak and that his dad had lied to him. Izuku stayed on the rooftop for much longer than he needed to, but he eventually decided to leave. Upon reaching the ground he could hear some kind of commotion and thought that it was a villain attack. He walked his way over there with heavy steps, only to be shocked when he got there. It was the sludge villain. It had somehow escaped. Izuku looked around and saw that a deflated All Might was also observing the scene. But he couldn't do anything because he had run out of time. It was at this moment that Izuku realized that it was his fault. The villain must have escaped when he grabbed onto All Might's leg. And now it was wreaking havoc once more. Izuku looked closer, realizing that the villain had a hostage. His shock quickly turned into horror. However, when he saw that the hostage was none other than Bakugu, the blonde teen was desperate, firing his explosions in an effort to break loose. But it didn't work. Izuku looked into Bakugu's eyes and saw the true terror that he felt. The blonde may not have been such a nice person, but he didn't deserve any of this. The green-haired boy felt something strange within himself. As he sprinted onto the scene before even knowing what was happening, the sludge villain saw the green-haired boy approach him. As he tried to swat him away with a tendril of sludge, Izuku managed to dodge the attack and made it up to Bakugu. The blonde was being held tightly. And the sludge villain knew that the green-haired boy had no hope of breaking him free. But what happened came as a shock to both the villain and Izuku. With just one pull he managed to release Bakugu. The sludge villain didn't understand what was happening. For the green-haired boy hadn't been this strong just moments earlier. Izuku was shocked, maybe even baffled. By what just happened, he didn't remember ever being this strong, just what was happening. Many possibilities went through his head at once. But his eyes widened when he landed at an answer. Both teens flew backwards due to the unexpected force. Until they finally landed with their backs against a brick wall. Izuku's eyes were wide with disbelief. As he looked at his hands and muttered, No way, it's real. In awe, this awe didn't last for long, however. As the sludge villain approached them both, Izuku acted quickly and threw his backpack towards the villain. Using his newfound strength, he missed completely. As the backpack embedded itself into the wall behind the villain, the sludge villain slowly approached both Izuku and Bakugu. Before jumping in for the attack, both teens closed their eyes and braced for impact, but were met by something else. Instead of being jumped and surrounded by a disgusting mass of sludge, they could hear a loud crash before feeling cold droplets splatter them in the faces. The teens opened their eyes, only to be both shocked and overjoyed. In front of them was a man with short hair a mustache, and a suit that was white with a massive red O on the chest. Everyone, including the onlookers and the pro-heroes, knew who this was. It was the unlicensed hero who did his work in many different countries himself. Omni-man, but Izuku knew him as his father. The green-haired boy stood up and was relieved to see his father. Until he got a look at his face. He was not happy. And Izuku didn't know if he was ready to bear one of his scoldings yet. That didn't matter, however. As Omni-Man instantly walked over to Izuku, grabbed firmly onto him, and said, We need to talk, now, before taking off with his son in hand. Valen didn't waste any time. He quickly flew up to a rooftop with Izuku, looking very irritated, before saying, You're in trouble. Young man, do you have any idea how dangerous that was? You could have hurt yourself. If not worse, sounding just as angry as he looked, Izuku cowered upon hearing his father's angry tone. As he replied by saying, he was being killed, and no one did anything about it. I had to do something. In a desperate attempt to explain himself, Nolan just pinched the bridge of his nose. As he sighed before saying, Izuku, I really hate to say this, but you're quirkless. What do you honestly think that you can do? With a voice that was a little calmer than before, Izuku scratched the back of his head in an awkward motion. As he responded by saying, 
apparently throw a backpack straight through a solid brick wall. With an equally awkward voice, Nalan was both shocked and confused upon hearing this. As he uttered, What? Izuku looked at his father. Before explaining, I threw my backpack so hard that it embedded itself into the brick wall. Either that was hysterical strength, or I just got my powers, he said, still looking a little awkward. Nalan's expression showed one of shock, but that shock quickly turned into joy as he said, Great, that's just great. It doesn't change the fact that what you did was stupid, but I'm happy for you. With a genuinely joyous tone, before continuing by saying, We'll start your training early tomorrow, so you'll be ready for the UA entrance exam. With a voice that almost sounded a little excited, Izuku smiled upon hearing this. As he said, You sound like you're even more excited than I am, Dad. Nolan just laughed upon hearing this. As he said, Of course I am. I finally get to show my son what it means to be a Viltrumite. With a proud voice, making him sound similar to All Might, Izuku was once again happy and was also getting excited. He was happy to finally have powers, and he was excited about learning how to use them. But there was one thing that made him happier above everything else, that it was real. What made him the happiest was knowing that his father had been telling the truth, that what he told him all those years ago wasn't a lie. All Might was in a hurry for he needed to act quickly. Upon seeing how the green-haired boy had rushed in to save the hostage he had decided, he was going to make him his successor. But he was both shocked and confused by what he saw. The teen had said that he was quirkless, yet he was strong enough to break the hostage free and almost make a hole through a brick wall. This meant that the kid was either lying or just unlocked his quirk. He would later learn that it was the latter. After tailing the kid when Omni-Man had taken him, he was far away enough for them to not notice him. And he couldn't hear their entire conversation, but he heard enough to establish two things. One, the kid just unlocked his quirk during his clash with the sludge villain. Two, he was Omni-Man's son. The second piece of information had both shocked and sent chills down All Might's spine. But at the same time it made him happy. The green-haired teen, who he heard was called Izuku, definitely didn't need his quirk nor guidance, so he could give one for all to someone else. That way there would be two individuals capable of becoming the next symbol of peace. All Might stood face to face with a teen. He was in his skinny form, but luckily the teen had believed him when he said that he indeed was All Might. The deflated hero had just explained one for all to the teen. So now came the moment of truth. Well, young man, what do you say? Will you be my successor? The skeletal man asked, anxiously waiting for an answer. The teen grinned upon hearing all of this as he responded with both pride and confidence. Hell yeah, outro. Thank you all for sticking around and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave we would just like to let you know that We The Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We The Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video. So goodbye and have a divine day.